Clarkston and I'm here today with my co-host Hula and we're going to talk to you about the winter sleigh ride or specifically the horses that pulled the sleigh. So pour yourself a hot cup of something and join us. I'll introduce you to my friend here. I'll let her speak a little bit for herself. She's a 20 month old quarter horse filly. Uh, she's a Palomino as you can see. So she's just a baby. We haven't started riding her, obviously. We'll wait a little bit longer for that. She's got some growing to do, but she's never gonna get very tall. She's only gonna get about 14 hands, so maybe about here. Now, a hand is a measurement of four inches, and in the old days, it was considered to be the width of a man's hand, like that. Pretty big hand, if you ask me. But that's what we do, and when we look at uh, the horses that would have been used in carriages and sleighs, they were probably about 16 hands on average, maybe 15 and a half, which is 15, uh, it's about five foot two in American terms. Let's talk a little bit about the types of horses that were often used for carriage driving and for sleighs. Uh, many of them actually came partially for some of the draft breeds. Uh, the Cleveland Bay actually started out as a draft horse and was later infused with some more thoroughbred type blood to lighten it up and make them a little bit flashier. But they were still a very strong horse. Nebraska here is probably the closest thing I can show you to what a carriage horse in Regency England would have looked like. He's, a, he's an older gentleman. You can see by the sockets above his eyes here. Uh, he's a beautiful bay color, which was considered to be the most perfect color. And by the way, if you were gonna go match a team to drive down the streets of London and make yourself have a real flashy turnout, this would have been one of the primo choice colors, uh, followed by gray, black, and chestnut. Now, another thing about Nebraska is he's got a great height, a very strong shoulder here. He's about 15 three hands, which means five foot three right here. Uh, he's got nice strong legs. You can see here, he has some great feathering along his legs, which is actually, it's not really feathering. If you were looking at a draft horse, you could see some what they call real feathers. Uh, you could almost braid them. But he has some, some hair along the back of his legs that would protect him from ice and snow. He's a very gentle horse, uh, but he can get up and go when he wants to. He can really move out. He's a flashy, pretty mover, which is very desirable in a carriage horse. He's got a nice, strong hip here, which is where the power comes from. This is a horse's uh, engine, you might say. So, altogether, I think he might make a great candidate for a sleigh horse. What do you think, Nebraska? You want to try something else? Old dog, new tricks. One thing that's really important if you have a team of sleigh horses is horses that get along. Uh, this is Marty on the right and Kala on the left, and they are bestest of buds. One technique that might be employed by somebody who is trying to train horses to go together is to turn them out together. Just let them be each other's best friends. Uh, stable them next to each other, feed them together, and hopefully you'll develop a bond. Now, the other thing that's important is horses of similar heights because they have to be able to match their strides. And horses that are happy together, that enjoy working together, are going to sink their strides, they're going to be easy to handle, and it's just gonna be a real pretty, pleasant experience for everyone. Now you'll notice that Hula here has this beautiful, thick, white mane and tail. Now, if you were gonna deck your horse out for the finest in fashion, would you do something fun with that mane? That's right. Sometimes they would braid them up in great designs. Now the tail is another consideration. Many sleigh horses and carriage horses in general had their tails bobbed, which means actually cut off right about here. Now, uh, we would consider that possibly very cruel. Um, it was a safety concern so that the horse's tail wouldn't get become caught in the traces. Another problem was sometimes the rein could actually get stuck under the horse's tail and then you have a catastrophe waiting to happen. However, that has mostly fallen out of fashion in most of the horse world. Uh, it's still a thing somewhere. Obviously, you can see my taste. I like a nice, long, pretty tail. There's an old saying that goes, no horse, no leg, no horse. And it's especially true when you're talking about horses that had to serve as your transportation. So the care of the hoof and the leg is especially important. Now, when you think about icy conditions in wintertime, you have some extra considerations. This horse is wearing a shoe, and you can see that there is a lip right here where ice and snow could accumulate. And under the correct conditions, it could actually turn into a hard ball, making it very dangerous for the horse to walk or run. Now, in certain cases, you could apply some oil to the bottom of the hoof, or even a leather pad, uh, I believe, was sometimes used to kind of protect the inside of the hoof here from having any accumulation. Under normal circumstances, however, the snow and ice would just flip right on out because the hoof should flex, and if there's continuous movement, 
it should not be allowed to accumulate. But you can see, since we have a metal shoe and a warm hoof here, uh, this is living tissue, that if you had just enough, uh, you could actually melt the ice there just a little bit, and then the shoe would refreeze it. So you could have a very dangerous situation on your hands. I've chosen Hula as our demonstration horse today, mostly because she is a baby, which means that uh, in probably about the next year or so, she would be considering starting her working life in Regency England probably around the age of two or three, depending on the owner, possibly as old as four or five. It would truly depend on her growth and the owner that she was with. <coughs> um, the way you start a young horse, it's always on consistency and repetition. They do learn with respect. They learn with uh, exploring new things. And because they are prey animal, one of the best things to give them is a release from any kind of discomfort. So rather than like a dog where you give them a treat when they do something correctly, with a horse, you stop asking them to do something, and that is their pressure release, and that's what they look for. So Hula and I are getting ready to have a lot of fun in the next year when she's ready to start riding. Lunging is a traditional format for horse training. Basically, it just means that the horse works around you in a circle, and that they start to learn to respond to your voice and to your body movements. So you'll see that I've started out very similar to the lunging she's already familiar with. And then gradually, I'll start just coming behind her a little more. Very important here, she knows how to stop. Whoa. And even back up. Back. There we go. Not bad for a youngster. Of uh, Hula, we're going to go on and be a sleigh horse. Her next step in training a little farther down the road would be to be fastened between uh, some poles, kind of like a travoy, so she could drag them and get the use to the feel of something stiff on either side of her that she would have to compensate for. Uh, but that's it for her driving training. She's going to go on and hopefully be a reining horse. So uh, no more sleigh bells for Hula. And speaking of sleigh bells, <laughs> is there any more iconic sound in the world than sleigh bells? Now the sleigh bells would have been specially made, uh, probably specific for each gentleman. They would have been cast out of brass. The cuts that you see here were designed to allow proper vibration of sound. So they actually found different shapes and different sizes. All kinds of different styles would make different sounds. The one that didn't seem to work was a square bell for some reason. Uh, these aren't real bells. These actually are my dog's doorbell. These, however, are the real deal. These are antique uh, brass, and there's this really lovely patina leather right here. And I believe these silver tone are still actually a brass. Um, I'm not a metallurgist, but I'm an author, which means I make things up. Um, I think these are a high zinc alloy. Uh, different kinds of metal in the bells would make them have different sounds, with these harder ones being a brighter tone. I think gorgeous. Uh, whereas a, a softer metal would be a more mellow tone. These nice long ones like this would have been worn along the traces and they would have alerted other traffic as to the sleigh coming up because sleighs were very quiet. Also, it's a status of wealth and uh, supposedly warded away evil spirits. Talking about getting ready to go out for your sleigh ride, there are different kinds of harness available. Now there was the heavier type with the collar and hangs that would have run around here, definitely suitable for a workhorse or a heavier carriage. Uh, a lighter one might have had more of a breast strap here. That's who was saying hello. More of a breast strap here and then also dependent on the uh, belly band. I'm going to put some pictures up so you can see the difference. But the part that probably you would be most familiar with would be the blinders that would go over the horse's eye. A horse has what we call monocular vision, which means that they can see that way and they can see that way and they can only see this way when they lift their head and focus on something that's a few feet away. Uh, that's when they actually put together an entire picture like what you would see. Now, monocular means they actually get two separate images from the different sides of their body. Now, the blinders come into that because a horse is a prey animal, which means that their first instinct for fight or flight, they're going to choose flight. Uh, if you have a prey animal that they can see something following them, and for that instant, while they're still a little bit afraid, they haven't figured out that that thing is just the carriage that they've been attached to for an hour or two already you can actually get into quite a wreck that way. So the blinders are quite a good safety measure. All right, where are my Black Beauty fans? How many of you read the book a million times like I did? 
So you'll probably recognize some of these terms I'm about to share. Um, in the old days, most horses were kept in what was called a tie stall, which was just narrow slats where they would be tied up, fed their hay, and then later they would be led away to water, which is probably where that old saying came from, that you can lead a horse to water, but yeah, you know the rest. Well, anyway, Hallie would like to show you a little bit about her stall. This is her personal space, and uh, she has a 12 by 12 run. This is where she spends her nights, and she gets a, well, modern day, we use a rubber mat with shavings. Now, in the old days, they would have used probably wheat chaff, straw, something like that, to make a barrier for the moisture and the droppings. But these days, we try to keep it nice and dry, kind of nice and clean. We have some more technology to help us out. And we try to keep them comfy. Right, Allie? Well, there you have it. More than you ever wanted to know about the Regency Sleigh Horse. So, with the warmest wishes, Hula and I bid you a Merry Christmas. Right, Hula? <laughs>